All right, today I'm coming at you guys with the Fantex P300A, which is a budget mid-tower mesh-centric case that comes in at 60 US dollars. And we're gonna figure out how to build inside this case and what it's like building inside this case. If you guys want thermals and noise performance, I highly suggest going over to Gamers Nexus and checking out their review and video of this case as well. So, let's get to it. To start things off, let's look at the top of the case and see what kind of I.O. we have here. We got a power button, reset button, two USB ports. I don't know if they're USB 2.0 or 3.0, but I'm going to go ahead and be optimistic and say it's 3.0. I'll correct it in the video, of course. And then we got our audio jacks right up top. Nothing too crazy. It is a budget case, so this is fairly standard. We also have a mesh dust filter up on top. It is magnetic, and it looks like we have room for either a 120 or 140 millimeter fan or radiator up on top. Now, let's move to getting this case with all the panels off. So to take off the tempered glass panel over here, we have two thumb screws, both of which I believe are actually capped, so they don't have to come out at the ends. Yep, it looks like that. Capped or captive, whichever one you like. Also, we have a warning sticker label. I know it's going to be probably out of focus, but it's on top of the plastic over here and not underneath it. See, if it was underneath the plastic, it would be stuck to the glass and then it would just be a real pain to take off. And then you just pull out and take it off. Inside the case, you can notice that we have plenty of packaging to keep this from rumbling around. So I do appreciate the added packaging. Uh, we also have a vertical GPU bracket. Not sure how necessary this is for this type of case. Um, and vertical GPUs don't necessarily have that great of thermal performance. So not too sure why this is in here. Moving to the back of the case, it's the same deal. We have two capped thumb screws right here. And it's going to be the same pull back and unhinge method, but you know, just pretty standard. Okay, and in the back of the case over here, it looks like we have an SSD caddy right over here that undoes like that, just pops right out. So you can go with either one over here, whichever one is more convenient. Looks like we have a decent amount of space in the back, not a terrible amount of space. I mean, it, it's fairly standard, but this is nice having this cable runway, this like channel over here. And there's little outlets along the side over here that let the cables go through. And we also have included Velcro straps, so that is nice to see over there. To take off the front panel, you simply just pull at the bottom and the whole front panel easily comes off. And you can see we have two spots for either a, looks like it either two 120 or two 140 millimeter fans. Also in the front, you'll notice that we have the hard drive cages. So to save on space, because this is a more compact case, I believe it is compact ATX. Um, we have the hard drive cages facing towards the front. Now this is actually done pretty well. This makes it really easy to access the hard drive cages. So they come out of these tabs, you just pull them in and then pull out the tray for both of them. And it comes with two trays. And trays are pretty easy to install your drive to. Um, has a little infographic right up here. You just pop out the tabs and then you pop them back in whenever you place a drive inside the tray. And another nice added thing is this cutout right over here for cables, for SATA and SATA power cables. And we also get one included 120 millimeter fan. Fantex makes some actual decent fans, so I'm pretty happy they have at least one included. It is a $60 case, so you can't really expect more fans from it. So I would recommend at least adding one or two fans to this case as one is not gonna cut it. And as for the included accessories box, it looks like they just threw all the screws together and the zip ties, which is okay, but for first time beginners, uh, building their first PC, that might be a little confusing to go through and sort all the screws. However, you can look through the manual and look at the diagrams to figure out which screw is which. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do with building in this case is I'm gonna take out this fan. I wanna maximize how much area I have to work inside the case since it is a bit smaller, but I always do that just in good practice. I'm also gonna mount the AIO to the front over here since it's a 240 millimeter radiator, it's not gonna fit on top because it only has room for a 120 or 140, so it's gonna have to be at the front. So with that, you can actually mount the radiator and the motherboard and not have to worry about any sort of clearance issues. If we were mounting the radiator up top, I would have to wait on mounting the radiator 
last as I would like to get all the cables passed through the top and everything like that first. Installing the motherboard is fairly easy, very straightforward as it should be. It's a little tight up on top over here. So just make a note of that. Make sure you understand that there is gonna be a bit of tight space in there. So now to install the power supply, you have to drop it in through the back like this. However, this case is far too small to fit this power supply, which is a fairly standard size power supply without removing the hard drive cage, which you can do in this case, which is a great added feature. So to remove the hard drive cage, you need to remove these four screws right over here. Now, there are also four Phillips heads. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but there's also four screws up on top that you have to take out as well. Unfortunately, this radiator is blocking the fourth screw in the corner there, so I will have to take that out. Okay, so once you have all the screws out, it kind of just falls apart, and you just take the, the sides out and everything. Also, there's an RGB strip off on the shroud over here, and it is connected via zip tie to one of the walls. So just make sure you don't go yanking it out. Just be careful. Now that the basement is all cleared out, we can finally move in. Then all you have to do is line it up on the back over there and just screw it into place. Okay, so I pre-routed all the wires and then I'm gonna add in the GPU and then get everything tidied up in the back. But just wanted to point out the USB 3.0 cable is a little tight. Now, usually the USB 3.0 port on the motherboard is somewhere up over here, but for this motherboard, it's down over here. Another thing to note is that there are cable routing holes up over here, which are fine and completely not intruded by the motherboard, but there is uh, a cable cutout right over here, as you can barely see, but it is a little covered up by the motherboard. All right, so for cable management, it's actually fairly easy. I didn't even use one zip tie this entire case now granted i don't have a lot of parts in this if you had rgb strips rgb fans and potentially ssds back here yeah you definitely need some zip ties but for all things considered it's fairly organized at least over here where you have a lot of the cable running through here so that cable runway is actually very helpful over here you have tie down points up here there's a little clip to clip any wires over here and you can run a lot of cables down over here you also have tie down points along the bottom of this wall right here so there's lots of options especially if you take out the hard drive cage you have a lot of space just to cram cables underneath and the front of the case cleans up pretty well as well there's a good enough amount of space in here to to really get your hands in and operate freely and i really appreciate that now would you benefit from a smaller motherboard perhaps but the biggest thing is about that power supply you're probably going to need a smaller power supply no matter which way you're looking at it overall the quality of the case is great especially for the price point that you're getting it 60 dollars you really can't expect too much from a case at that price point for dipping down to 50 30 20 a lot of stuff is made out of very thin metal and a lot of plastic now most of the metal in here is fairly robust doesn't buckle under a lot of pressure it, it's machined very well. Fantex did a good job maintaining its quality while shrinking down the form factor to meet those price requirements. If you have a 120 millimeter radiator, you might be able to fit it up top, but it might be cutting it a little close in terms of clearance for everything else over here. Cable management is great. The price point is great. The airflow is great. I highly recommend this case as a budget alternative to $100 cases. This does a lot and it does it very well. It is a little bit smaller, but it keeps its aesthetics, it keeps the airflow, and it keeps the quality. And with that being said, make sure you check out the rest of the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Consider subscribing. My name is JD. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.